assignment today is going to focus on translating verbal expressions, meaning words, into equations. And hopefully you picked that up from the title of this sheet. Um, this is located in your notes packet, by the way, that hopefully you received yesterday in class. Um, and I'm going to walk you through the highlighting part of these directions. So the directions say to highlight, 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 and then after you've highlighted, write an equation. This part here, we're going to do together tomorrow in class. Okay, so for today, we're just focusing on the highlighting. Now, what I find in algebra is that the scariest thing for students is word problems. And I don't know where this word phobia came from. Okay, but people are intimidated when they see a lot of words in a problem. It shuts them down, and they think that they don't know how to do the problem before they've even stopped to think about the problem. If you think that that describes you, don't worry, you are not alone. And that's something we're going to be combating all year. Um, word problems should not be scary, okay? Because a lot of the times, the words in the problem are really just an equation in disguise. And for a lot of students, as soon as you write it as an equation, as soon as you can write it with an X and a, um, an equal sign and all of those things, students are fine, okay? So the process that we're starting out the year with is just how to take the, the words in a problem and translate them literally, like translating from a foreign language into an equation, okay? Now, I don't expect you, every time you get a word problem, to break out your three highlighters and dissect it, even though it's not a bad idea, okay? It would not be a terrible idea if you're stuck on a word problem to, to start highlighting or circling or something. Um, but if you practice this a few times, this process of kind of dissecting the problems and really pulling them apart, um, you will find it's easier to do in your head later on, okay? So, although some of you may be looking at this and rolling your eyes and thinking, oh my gosh, why do we have to do so much work? I can totally do this in my head. Um, I want you to go through this process with me today because it's going to be important for your mind to have this sort of registered later on. Okay, so one of your assignments for this week was to go on to the website called Lino It. Um, and work with your group and put together uh, an, a list of operation words. So the operation words are the words that would imply addition or subtraction or so on. Okay. Um, within that list, I asked you to come up with the word that means equals. And I'm not sure if you were able to do that on your own, because um, that's a tricky one. So I'm just going to tell you now, the word that means equals is always some variation of the word is. Okay. If I were to say the sum of 2 and 3 is 5, okay? Let me write that out for you real quick. If I had the sentence, the sum of 2 and 3 is 5. Look at that for a second. I could write that as an equation like this. Because sum means to add, my numbers are 2 and 3, and it equals 5. Okay, so the word that means equals is always is. Now, is shows up a couple of different ways. If it's past tense, it's actually the word was. And if it's plural, it's the word are. So these words are really just is in disguise. Okay, but your first directions here is to highlight the word that means equals in blue. So I'm going to skim through all eight of these and just do, do all of those in one, one shot. That way I'm not switching the markers back and forth, and also I just kind of get in the habit of looking for one thing every time. So twice the number diminished by 17 is negative 3. Six times the number increased by 3 is 27. See how I'm doing that? I'm just looking for the is, and that's going to be important later on. Okay, Carl's team scored 39 points, which was, oh, there's one of those tricky ones, which was one point less than blah, blah, blah. Okay, right now, all I care about is that is. The difference between 3 times the number and 5 is 25. The length of a rectangle is 6 feet more than twice the width. Four-fifths of the, okay, this one is a tricky one. Four-fifths of the third grade went on a trip to the zoo. If 64 children made the trip, how many children are in the third grade? That word is does not show up in any of its forms in this problem. 
So you, this one is sort of implied, and you really have to think carefully here. It says four-fifths of the third grade went on a trip, and 64 children went on the trip. So this four-fifths is 64 children. Okay, the four-fifths of the third grade is 64 children is what this says if I were to reword it. So your is in this one is sort of implied. Those ones pop up every once in a while, but I'm telling you, 90% of the time you can find that word right inside your problem. Price of the pack of gum today is 63 cents. And then what you need to be careful of here is there's another one. And we'll talk about that when we actually write this equation. This is three cents more than three times the price 10 years ago. Okay? Um, we'll talk about that double is when we write the equation together. And then the last one, number eight, the sum of two numbers is 35. Okay? All right, let's get back up to the top. And the next set of directions, they highlight the word that represent the variable in pink. Okay, the variable in algebra is the thing you don't know. But it's a specific thing you don't know. It's the thing you don't know and you want to know. Because if I were to ask you right now to list all of the things you don't know, you could probably come up with quite a list. However, I bet you could come up with a bigger list of things you do know. Um, but it's the thing you don't know and you want to find. Okay, It's the thing that you're trying to find mathematically. And that process, the finding what it is that you don't know, is called defining the variable. You're going to hear me say that a lot this year. And it's going to be one of those things where you roll your eyes at me and tell me, why do I have to do all this work? Um, but it's important. It's an important process. And I, I am hoping that eventually you can get to the point where you can sort of do it internally. You can do it in your head. But while you're learning to do it, you kind of got to write it out. Um, because you can't find what you need to, you can't find what you're trying to find unless you know what it is you're trying to find, if that makes sense. You, you won't ever know what you don't know unless you know what it is you're trying to find. Okay, Those both sound really confusing, but I think you'll see what I mean when I start working through this. So we are going to find the thing it is that we don't know. And the good news is that's always located, okay, I guess not always, but most of the time, great majority of the time, you're going to be able to find that by skipping to the end of the problem. So, for example, in this first one, twice the number diminished by 17 is negative 3. Find the number. So what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find the number. Now, this, though, is not where I want to highlight that. I want to highlight it where it is in context with the rest of the problem. Okay, this is just the statement that's telling me what I'm trying to find. So I want to take that number and find it back there somewhere. Okay? And if you look right here, twice a number. There's that number that I don't know. That's what I'm going to highlight in pink. Okay? So again, number two, skip to the end of the problem. Find the number. So the number is my mystery thing. Okay? And there it is. Six times a number. The number is what I don't know. Okay? Number three, skip to the end of the problem. And this is an important thing when you're doing word problems. Is I always encourage students to jump to the end of the problem. Okay, what is it I'm trying to find? I'm trying to find Todd's team score. Okay, now be careful that you don't just go, oh, I'm trying to find the team score because you've got two different team scores in here. You've got Carl's team and you've got Todd's team. It's Todd's team score that you're trying to find. And so then if I read through this sentence, I find Todd's team score right there. That's where I'm going to highlight in pink. Okay, oh, I shouldn't have highlighted it back here. Whoops. I was talking and got away with myself. Okay, number four. Again, skip to the end of the problem. I'm trying to find the number. So when I read sort of the problem setup, there's that number that I don't know. That's my thing I'm trying to find. Okay. At the end of this problem, number five, it says find the width. So the width is my variable. I'm going to read through the rest of the problem and highlight the width. Number six, 
I'm trying to find how many children are in the third grade. So I want to know. I did it again. Shouldn't be highlighting it there. Okay, that's what I'm trying to find. That's where my question is. How many children are in the third grade? So I'm going to look back up here and say, oh, there's my third grade. Okay. Now I know it doesn't say children in the third grade, but when I say four-fifths of the third grade, hopefully that's implied to you that that's four-fifths of the children in the third grade. Okay. This is another tricky one. Number seven. Find the price 10 years ago. Be careful that you don't just go with price because there's two different prices being talked about here. There's the price today and the price 10 years ago. We want the price 10 years ago. That's my variable. Okay. And number eight, the sum of two numbers is 35. One of the numbers is 12. What is the other number? Now this one's a little bit tricky too in that it's not specifically, it does not give you the phrase other number here in the problem. But here's what I want you to think about. It says the sum of two numbers. Well, my two numbers I could think of as a number and another number. Okay, if I tell you I have two numbers, I have a number and another number. Sorry, that's really messy. Um, it says one of my numbers is 12, so that is 12. My other number is my variable, okay? The other number would be this one. Okay, and the last little thing we're going to highlight today is the operation word. Operation words, when I say what is the operation word, I want to know what are the words that tell you something to do mathematically. So they tell you to add, they tell you to subtract, they tell you to multiply, they tell you to divide. It's words that tell you how to put things together. Okay, and hopefully that's what you came up with when you did your, your chart together with your group. Okay, so for example, in this first one I'm looking for any number that implies either addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. So twice. Twice means to multiply something by two, so that's an operation number. Diminished by, that's a tricky one, not very many people come up with diminished by. So if you haven't added that to your table, go on and do it now, um, or when you're done with this. Okay, number two, six times, times is an operation word. Increased by, that's an operation word, means to add. Okay, number three, one point less than, less than is an operation word, means subtraction, and then there's that twice again, that's actually two different words, okay, less than and twice. Number four, the difference between three times a number and five is 25, okay. Number five, the length of the rectangle is six feet more than means addition. Twice means to multiply by two. Again, that's two separate words there. Number six, this is um, tricky. This word of, if you didn't get that on your, on your table with your group, I would recommend somebody go put it on there now. Of means multiplication, but it almost always shows up with a fraction. So if I say one-third of or two-fifths of, um, that always means to take the fraction and multiply it by something. So of means multiplication, that's an operation word. And that would be hard to find because otherwise there's not really anything else in this problem that is an operation word. Okay, number seven, the price of a pack of gum today. Da, 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 da. Three cents more than, so more than is an operation word. Three times the price ten years ago. There's some operation words there. And then number eight, we have the sum, which means addition. This is one of the numbers is 12, what is the other? Okay, so this is what your sheet should look like now, and this is what I'll expect it to look like when you come into class tomorrow. And then what we're going to do tomorrow is I'm going to show you how to take all of these pretty colors and turn those things into mathematical equations. Like I said, it's going to be like translating into a foreign language. We're going to go word by word, piece by piece, and turn it into an equation. Okay? So your assignment for tonight is to not only follow along with this with me, 
Um, but then I would also like you to take the assignment that I gave you. Oh, I don't have a copy of it here. But it says more word problems at the top. And it, it's similar to this. It's similar to these types of word problems. I want you to take your three highlighters and do exactly what I just did with you. So I would like you to go through and I would like you to do the same highlighting. The equals in blue, the variable in pink, the operation word in yellow. So when you come into class tomorrow, you should have this highlighting and that other assignment highlighted. Okay? Feel free to email me if you have questions.